Hey everybody, I'm Psychosaurus and today, well, there's been quite a few changes. Whoa. A while back, oh boy. So yeah, we're gonna take a look at them. Yeah, there's been quite a few. So let's get started and I'll try to go through these as fast as possible because I don't wanna spend too much time with these. So this one is from May 11th, so Balance change, version megas, hit points increase to 140 from 120 in our seer, the same thing, and maintain consistency. Yeah, so this pretty much was a follow up to the Pontifex change. And yeah, so priest and a little bit more health. A little bit annoying. Okay, nothing, bug fixes. Yeah, the skip quest feature was fixed. I think we hoped so. Uh, fix some visual glitches, yeah, something visual that happens all the time. Okay, deliver the supplies, fix an issue where the merchant transport would stop moving if its path was blocked for too long. And I don't remember this quest. Is it one of those repeatables? I don't remember, honestly. But yeah, I saw people like complaining about it. Uh, come together, fix an issue with a few legion response that headed towards the wrong direction. Yeah, that was happening. Not anymore. Uh, art updates updated the Celtic Wonders textures to better indicate its player colors. So it's more visual thing. Then we got the champion mode. I'm not going through this. There's just so much stuff here. So just. Okay, blah blah blah, so much. Okay, UI updates, swap the location of the marine information, have a medicine updates in the Roman tech tree to be more consistent with other tech trees. Yeah, sure, train time and research rate, oh this is a good one. Train time and research rate changes are now reflected on building stats tooltips. When you have, for example, equipped an Athenian training manual, Similar to when you have a Babylonian Garden built. So pretty much if you have Babylonian Garden and you would hover over the building icon, you could see in stats that they have the train time and research time lowered depending on how many gardens you've built. So now you can see it for every save and it's being affected by all the items such as the training manuals yeah so you will see the exact numbers how much time is actually being lowered thanks to these train rates and research rates and yeah following this the wording of the greek philosophy upgrade has been changed to allow for this change old description reduces upgrade research time at all buildings new description reduces the research time of all updates now it affects all upgrades directly rather than the buildings they are researched in. Yeah, so <laughs> a little bit different. Other updates, fixed values, typos and inconsistencies, added hotkeys for armory upgrades. They are unassigned by default, so you will need to assign them yourself. You can find them under the armory hotkeys submenu in the hotkeys menu. So yeah, we can take a look at these. Here, so we go options, hotkeys, let's see, armory, there it is. So you can see I don't have them assigned because I don't really care. But if you want to assign them, you can find it here. So you have the melee damage, pierce damage, melee armor, pierce armor, and armor upgrade, which is for Egyptians specifically, which can test both melee and pierce upgrades so you can find it here okay okay back and potentially fix the animation of few units healing actions under certain circumstances yeah sure okay so that's all from this one this one was 15th of may roman aquilifer population count increased to two from one so yeah <laughs> I'll be honest, Roman Aquifers have pretty huge stats, so for one pop unit, it did not feel right. So I kind of agree with the two pop 
population count and also it makes sense with the process advisor who lowers the population cost of officer units so it makes perfect sense here in my opinion bug fixes fixed an issue yeah you can see it was not fixed before and some visual glitches uh, wait what am i crazy deliver the supplies isn't that the same thing man some things don't change huh <laughs> That easily okay race race we under now also grants five empire points which is nice pretty fast quest so we show five empire points why not okay more champion mode upgrades and oh boy I'm not gonna prove this but this one is pretty good rampant wall h4 wall update now avail available to the Greek civilization and <laughs> I kind of miss these walls back in the day <laughs> You could actually have unlocked, I think, only one more for Greeks. So these walls already exist, existed in the game. And yeah, those are like, I think you can see them in some quests still. So I'll, I'm glad they are being used somewhere at least. And blah blah blah. Who cares? If you like champion mode, go ahead, check it out. And other updates, and this one is. Yeah, I should have done this sooner, probably, but. Oh boy, there was not that much here. So, community help required. Do you experience the widescreen bug? It's somewhat rare bug that makes you your game textures load incorrectly, particularly loading screens. This makes the game show you a widescreen instead. To help analyze what causes this bug, we have added a new hotkey for generating a log file when you encounter this bug. Here is how to get the log file. Press shift plus F10 key on your keyboard to generate this log file. Navigate to your document Spartan folder. Find the debug info. EXT file. Send that file to us over Discord. Me or one of the other lead developers or post it here on the forums. Yeah pretty much there's a widescreen section so you, if you want to help it's still going on because the widescreen bug is I guess quite nasty it happens even to me I don't know if I have shown to you very much everything becomes white it's main menu loading screens and typically like text and like the tips and like the Ugh, what's the word? The boards. Whatever it's called. Yeah, it's it's just over a white screen. So if you wanna help, hey, press the F10 and go to Discord, send it there. Any help it's quite nice. So yeah, Ooh, wait. Added the Cree debug info log hotkey, more information above, added splash damage, armor and an attribute. It is displayed on units that have it baseline. Yeah, that's nice. Fixed an issue where the server would fall into a dead low bug leading to data loss. Yeah, okay. Let's move on. So balance changes. Roman, this one was 25th. Uh, yeah, this one is 29th, okay. So 25th. Roman Cretan Bowman, bonus versus infantry reduced. I think this is some kind of follow up with the base damage increase, so <laughs> yeah, I think it was uh, the bowman was a little bit too strong, I guess, and these two are pretty good Celtic stone thrower and Norse lock thrower pack unpack animation speed increased by thirty three percent and oh boy, I checked it, and yeah. They are pretty fast now. <laughs> well, I like it because it makes them even more mobile than the polytons, but they already were packing and unpacking faster than polytons, so now they are even more fast. Yeah. And it's pretty fast now, so. 
De definitely it's nice adding some throwers into your army and they will they won't be slowing you that much down in my opinion right now I definitely like this change but was it needed? I don't know but it's nice I like it bug fixes fix an issue where Norse war dogs when in their for intended formation position in the army Fix an issue with the Egyptian chariot archer was dealing, champion mode only, okay, fix an issue, champion mode only. Fix an exploit where the Persian 8th tent could be used to heal it by units without having it be fully built. I don't know anything about it, don't ask me. But <laughs> it will, it might have been a thing. I honestly have no idea, I don't, I don't play Persians that often so I wouldn't notice that. Art updates updated the 3D model of Perseus's lightning struck Makaira to match its icon. So it should be looking good now. <laughs> okay, even more champion mode changes. And oh boy, there's a lot of them again. I don't really care. I don't think there's anything interesting here. It's just a lot of stuff. Oh yeah, they have some of these wall changes like. Yeah, like different help and something, I don't know. Study it for yourself if you care about it. I don't really care about it. It's just a lot of numbers. Differences. Okay, UI updates. Updated the tooltip of ram ships to properly indicate that they are effective against both ships and buildings. I mean, it, it's a ram, so it should be definitely good against buildings. And yeah, it's a ship, so it should be able to fight other ships. <laughs> so why not? Updated the main ways to earn Empire Points interface to show daily login rewards instead of the old mail reward. Uh, I don't, I don't really remember where this is. So, <laughs> so yeah. At least it's now showing the information properly, I guess. Updated the tooltip of militia of the Empire control rule to properly indicate its effects. I don't care about the control rules. Other updates. Fixed several typos in quest text. Good. Increased the server idle timeout threshold to 1 hour from 30 minutes. Now I like this kind of. <laughs> Sometimes I need to step away from my computer and yeah sometimes it takes longer than 30 minutes so I definitely am glad this is a thing and yeah it's been increased to one hour 30 minutes sometimes felt too fast for some reason I don't know sometimes it felt too fast so one hour you shouldn't be dropping that often but hey keep playing don't just sit there for one hour and do nothing, come on. Added hotkey support for all updates. These hotkeys are unassigned by default and you will need to assign them to a button yourself. You can find them in the hotkey section of the options menu. So this one is pretty much a follow up of the armory text hotkeys. And now it should be for all upgrades. So you need, let's take a look. We take a look, hotkeys, and let's say we find storehouse. So, yeah, here you can see we get the gloves, dogs, farm, woods, goldstone, eight them for Persians. You can assign it right here. So, we got the first storehouse. Do we have the guard tower? Ooh, we got the guard tower upgrades. We got the. Oh, yeah, this one I need to. Look. Be a sign mentioned here. Note convert wall to gain has been moved to the wall hotkey section and you will have to rebind it in order to use it again. I need to rebind it again, so let's let's do that right now. So change in G B for gate and okay. So now I should be just pressing the G again. So yeah. 
if you are wondering why you cannot turn your wall your walls into gates then yeah this is why you have to bind it and remove the scout of the empire consumable from the empire store you can now purchase each civilization's own scout consumable in, in its general store yeah you get consumables for scouts music update added the second track and the fifth track for inquest songs for the romans I haven't heard anything because I pretty much turn off the in-game music now. I'm a little bit annoyed, I guess. Select so changes, added extra details to the the backlog file. Yeah, that's good. Some more details. Let's move on. 29 May. A okay, balance changes. Roman Praetorium cost increased to 200 wood from 150 wood. Yeah, this one got me confused because I I thought this was the the Castellum tech and it's not the Castellum tech, it's the it's the officer tent. So yeah, officer tents cost now two hundred wood instead of one hundred fifty, which is I think it it's kind of fair because I don't get it why a military building should cost like less than 200 wood but then again I need to remember that sacred growth is a thing and that also costs 150 wood so yeah I think I think this makes sense in some way sacred growth you wanna get those so you can get those druids so <laughs> I guess it makes more sense here because hey how many units can you get out of Praetor, so yeah it's a nerf and I'm fine with it. Roman Gallic Horseman Champion upgrade cost increased to 1200 gold from 1000 gold. Uh, it's a nerf, it's a late game nerf, so 200 gold it's something but it's not that bad and Gallic Horseman once you get the Auxilla Camp upgrades, the first two, yeah they, they are not that expensive so I think you can find some spare gold on this, so it's a nerf, but I don't think it's necessarily that huge. Part of PvP updates: ranked map pool Savanna has been removed from the ranked map pool. Ghost Lake will take its place. The current map pool, yeah, 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 yeah. So that's for PvP. Bug fixes: fixed an issue where the research experiment champion, yeah, that was bug with hotkey. Uh, I think this one is the same. Weak stable factory tags. Fixed an issue where the elephant archer champion upgrade wasn't displaying its effects properly. Champion mode only. Okay. Fixed various issues in the statistics in some gears. Added missing overrides for alpine, alpine wolves in champion mode. Added missing cell cost override for Albion's rune forge tower. I don't, I don't know what that is, <laughs> to be honest. Okay, nothing, nothing, nothing. We got more champion or upgrade. I'm not reading this. It's just too much. I don't really care. And yeah, UI updates. Switch to splash damage armor and snare effect. Next lines on the Celtic Horseman champion upgrade tooltip to be more consistent with other tooltips. Champion more only. Okay. Added clubs and banners to the infantry crafting school UI. Banners make sense, clubs, yeah, once Indians are out, hey, there will be clubs. Added separators for global marketplace price numbers. And we can I can show you this one because this is actually a really nice change. So we go to the global market, we start searching, and now we can see hey, there are some separators for those digits so now it's more uh, bet it's better readable now so now you don't have to like count the zeros and now you can just see hey this is 8000 this is 15000 let's see legendary advisors take a look hey we can see the prices clearly 
You want to get Cesar, you want to get Krasos. Oh boy, now you can see it's in millions. Yeah, it, it's readable. Better. It's definitely better to read now. So definitely a great change. And definitely, <laughs> you can see the prices better so you don't have to like fall for for the trick with like the ones in the price so you don't have to try count the ones and don't get like fooled by the price yeah so you don't, you don't have to pay too much for the item definitely nice change updated the preview thumbnail for the swamp uh, map in champion mode other updates, other values, translation mistakes and inconsistencies in the Italian version of the game. Okay, and we are going for the last one, May 31st. And oh boy, nothing, 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 there's only one change here, don't care. UI updates, added additional information on Babylonian gardens who were over tooltip to display the increase in cost upon building additional gardens. In English and Spanish versions only. Other languages to follow in a future patch. Yeah, so I'm not going to show it to you, but when you have villages selected, you hover over the garden icon. You should see now that hey, it increases the cost per garden by 10 wood and 10 gold. So it's there, it should be there, and it's definitely important to notice. Gardens are not the cheapest thing once you have a bunch of those. Okay, other updates, and we'll get to this. Bottom slaughtery now available. The following items have been removed from the loot tables. They will be brought back in another form soon. So Divine Torque, Theos Exalted Xiphos, Leucon's Lucky Leather Armor, Artificer's Iron Plating, Neve's Blessed Javelin, Amunet's Vest of Foresight. So, what is Barham's Lottery, you might be asking. And this one is pretty good. If you want to get some pretty damn strong items. So, pretty much, we have the Barham's Lottery. What do you have to do? Hey, it's over here, you can see it. Just go to Tarsos, you'll find the building. I'll show it to you in a second. And why it's so important. Pretty much, you can win one of these four items every week. So... You go there, you buy some tickets, and you get one. And if you win, you either get one of these four items, or you win the jackpot, which is 50% of all the coins that have been invested into tickets. So yeah, you either get you can get rich, or you get one strong item of your choice. And yeah, so tickets, and for each ticket you buy, you also get a token and I'll explain it what to do with the tokens here you can see the items so yeah I'll get to it soon and the change about removing the items and this is about Moes Mistorium rework so if you don't know what Moes Mistorium is it's pretty much a store where you purchase a chest there are different chests, each have its own level, so if you want to get some, let's say, item level 35, then you go to Moes Mistorium, you can buy a chest level 35. And yeah, that's pretty much what Moes Mistorium is, you just, it's a good way to get lower level items. For example, if you want movement speed arrows, which they exist, but they are only level 30, or they might be even more, I don't remember, but I know that the best ones are level 30, so you go to Moes Mistorium, you start buying those level 30 chests, you start opening them and hope that, that you actually get those arrows. And yes, yeah, so these items were removed, and I believe most of these, I don't remember, I think the Divine Torque is there? And I think the artificer's iron plating is there. 
pretty much these items have a lot weaker version of of themselves so you would go to Moe to get those weaker versions before before these items even existed so you can guess that if since these items were removed they will be returned in some form and that's the part of the rework for Moe you will be able to as you buy those chests you will also have a chance to drop one a specific legendary items depending on the chest you will buy I don't I don't know what the f final form of it will be actually but for now it seems that the plan is hey you will be buying level 20 chests and from those you have a chance that you will drop this legendary item or this legendary item or something like that I think that that's how it's planned and yeah, so that's why these items were removed and they will come back with the MOS rework. Okay, and now let me then show you the Bahrams. Oops, wrong one. The Bahrams lottery. So, here you can see people have been buying a lot of these. This week's jackpot. <laughs> Okay, how much is there? Oh, I wish we had the separators here as well. So, okay, we got almost 39 millions in a jackpot. So, if you win, you'll be rich. That's a lot of money you can win. So, pretty much, you open this bottom lottery. Here, you have to how much time left till the next win. Here you can buy the tickets. Now you cannot purchase it right away. You need to click here. You can see the cursor highlights. Now you type the amount. So you wanna buy one, you wanna buy ten, or you wanna buy one hundred, and that's the maximum you can actually put in, right? Yeah, one hundred is maximum. Now I'm just gonna go and put just one ticket, okay. Purchase tickets to increase your chance of winning the jackpot and a piece of Bahrams gear. Do I have a chance if I don't have a ticket? I don't think so. I'm gonna buy one. Now you can see you have one ticket. So jackpot, like I said, you have a chance to win. You either win this jackpot, which increases as people keep buying the tickets. Or you can win one of these items. Pretty much if you win you select one of these items you just need to win and you choose the item now for these items so we have the Bahrams brand, branded arm guard which is soldier's gear that gives damage plus 16.7 movement speed 8.8 .8, and cost 19.8 so you can see this is I think it, the best description would it be the, as the Ice King's Greaves, but instead of health you get damage. And yeah, this item is definitely goddamn strong. And definitely, best option in my opinion for this one are the ranged units. Especially those with huge, huge range. Because you don't really need mag on, on them for... You, you just want the damage portion of the, of the mag so this one can definitely replace the mags on your ranged units so units such as Gustafetes which is definitely strong because they are pretty slow so the additional movement speed there is definitely gonna be great uh, yeah damage this is higher than maxed out mag can offer so it's definitely the biggest damage you can get and the cost that's even lower than mag can go down to I believe so yeah pretty damn strong item next one Bahrams Brisk Boots and this one is damage 13.1% health 23.8% movement speed 10.8% and cost 
So pretty much this is a max down mag with even lower cost I think. That also gives movement speed. And this item, in my opinion, is God damn, why is it so overbuffed? It just does not make sense to me. What? Like why? This item is definitely super strong. Like if you were using Mac, then if you get this item you definitely will replace a Mac. Because this item is much better than a maxed out Mac. It's so damn strong. It's so damn strong. I just don't like it. How strong it is. Okay, next one. Barnum's best battle armor. Elves 69.9%, damage 15.2%. So this is the legendary Athena's Golden Gorget. I think that's the name of the epic item. Yeah, so finally people have been crying for the legendary Athena. This is the way to get it. And I think this is pretty good armor. I kind of like it, how it is. And the last one is Bahram's beloved bow. Damage 57.4% and cost minus 9.9%. So that's a huge discount there because I think the the bows that give cost go like 2.3% or maybe 3% even. I don't remember the exact values. But damn, 10% cost discount? You serious? How is this even legal? I'll be honest. This item seems fine to me, kinda, but when you put it on a range unit, it just feels it just feels too strong. Like you get damage, they'll be more mobile. It just feels stupidly strong. And even lower cost than Mac. This is super broken item. <laughs> I don't I don't know who allowed this but God damn. This is too broken. I don't want this. This will just make questing in my opinion so so stupidly easy because I get I could get like a super overpowered mag with this. So I, could, I don't want this. I don't want this. I feel like it will make questing way too easy. It's too, it's too dirty in my opinion. This one I'm fine with. I wouldn't be afraid to get this one. Maybe the health is a little bit too high to be honest, but I I like this item because it feels like something I would want to get. Maybe on my elephants because elephants. I could go like the gar gar's has. Golden Gorget, but elephants unfortunately cannot apply crit on the splash damage, so the pure damage is better there. So, yeah, this would be a good option for some damage elephants, and I definitely would appreciate it. There. And this one, yeah, that cost is too, too big, don't you think? 10%? That, that's just a lot. And this bow can definitely go on something like down center, you can definitely put it on your fortresses, because those are pretty expensive. You could even go with towers if you're going like full damage tower build, then yeah, you can definitely put this one over any other bow on your tower and just spend towers. And I think another option would be the Roman Castellos, that, that's where I would put it definitely. <laughs> Yeah, I honestly don't really care. I honestly don't really want these items. Maybe one of these. And if I ever get these, then I'm gonna put it on some of my weaker units. Or some of the weaker units. Let's just take, say this, and I'm gonna put it on Peltast. I'm gonna put it on Peltast. I'm gonna put it on Sarisopher. Yeah, I don't care. I'll make them strong. Why not? And can you imagine? The fast pelt dust with this. Oh, that's gonna be fun. Okay, here you have like the description how it works exactly. So if you forgot how it works, here it is. Just come here, buy tickets, 
Okay, and now I should explain the tokens, how those work. So, as you buy tickets, you get tokens. You get one token per ticket you buy. And there's a limit how many tokens you can get per week. So, if we click here, you can see it here. So, every week you get Baham tokens based on how many tickets you purchase. One token. One token per ticket up to 1500 tokens each week so yeah if you buy more than 1500 tickets in one week you will not get you will not get additional tokens after that so 1500 that's a max and remember 1500 one ticket costs 1000 coins so that's million and a half so that's a lot of coins anyway and you can still purchase as many tickets as you want. Once you have enough tokens, you can redeem them to get one of Baham's special gear. So if you're not winning, unfortunately, but you're buying the tickets, so you're getting the tokens, so you can exchange them for one of the items. One of the four items. You, you can get them for 10,000 tokens. Now, if I remember, that should be a cooldown for this purchase, so you don't just go and buy everything at once. For those rich people out there. So, pretty much, there should be a cooldown of, I think, 30 days when you purchase it with tokens. I, I don't really know, because <laughs> it depends how rich people are. And you can see, I got the one token for the one ticket, so... Yeah, if you if you are not lucky, well, don't lose hope. At least you're getting the tokens, and once you have enough tokens, you can get the items. Anyway, one of the items you get for the tokens. So yeah, and those are the changes, the recent ones that I did not took a look through. So yeah, that, that's all from me for now. So. Tell me what you think about these changes in the comment section. And yeah, so thanks very much for watching. Remember to press the like, bu like button. And yeah, remember to subscribe right, as well. And oh boy, I, I must say thank you everyone who subscribed. We've reached the 250 su subscribers. Well, now it's 251, but yay! <laughs> It's an achievement, but we need we need to go higher. So if you haven't clicked the subscribe button, click it, please. I will appreciate it. And for those who already did, thank you very much. This was Psychosaurus, and I'll see you next time. Bye.